Ciao ragazzi, my name is Anthony. <coughs> Pardon me. Doing this stream because I was a little too sick, too sick to go into work. First day off in a while and what better way to spend it than to deliver some content, to deliver some transfer news, to deliver some stuff that we all want to see and what we want to hear. Let me know how you're doing and let me know if anybody pops into the live and I'll say hi. And then after that, anybody who watches it back, let me know your opinions in the comments below like you always do. I'm sorry, I'm going to look pretty flustered. Um, the whole way through this thing. And I'm actually looking forward to getting back into bed or getting back and rugging up after this video. But let me know how y'all doing. There's 12 people, 13, 14 in here now. Marty Mel's in the house. What's up? Uh, child to you as well, Miliano. Good to see you boys. Good to see you boys. How you doing? How are your families? How are your friends? What's up? OG Kim Darian in the house as well. It's good to see you. Good to see 15 people joining me here on Into Worldwide this morning. Lots to talk about in terms of outgoing players because We've sort of hit a stagnation in our deal for Dybala. Not, not, not in a way to make things concerning. You know, if anybody's active on Twitter, you'll see that it's an absolute cesspool of negativity, not just from Inter, but from all the clubs at the moment. Uh, Juve are in an absolute shambles when it comes to this Mercato. You know, Milan, despite winning the Scudetto, you really thought they would have made some movement by now or at least renew the contracts of Marassa um, uh, and Maldini. Uh, Marassi and Maldini, sorry. So we'll see what happens there. But let's just focus on us for a second, guys. As you would have seen, the thumbnail... Um, basically, we're talking about who has left Inter or who is going to leave Inter, where we're going to coop the cash, this Mercato. Uh, what's going on, Rami, bro? It's good to see you again, man. Thanks for stepping through. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about the outgoing players. And I've just, you know, put some slides together to go through some of the better times and some of the better, uh, you know, better memories of these players. Or how are we going to remember these players? How are we going <coughs> to... How are we going to remember the ones that have left? Uh, what's going on, Matteo? And what's going on to the 15 people here live this morning? So as per the thumbnail, which I stole off Twitter, this red image here. So take the, the fees with a grain of salt. I think it's what they're worth. Um, if you look up their transfer values, this is what these players are worth, uh, depending on where they are in their contracts and what's happening in their contracts. So pretty much we're going to talk about these uh, 11 bad boys or, you know, 10 bad boys. One really, 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 really bad boy for different reasons. But we'll get to that one pretty soon. Actually, we'll get to that one first. Um, so let me know in the comments as we put the players up. As we show a few slides, what are your favorite memories of these players? Um, are you sad to see any of them go? I'm sure everybody in this particular video is a justified sale. And yes, Emiliano, we are going to get to Denzel in a second. But first... Is the very, very, very naughty boy, the very bad boy, Radu, Mr. Radu, didn't single handedly gift Milan the Scudetto, but he was sort of like the nail into the coffin of us going, You let it slip before. You got yourself into this position against Bologna that you didn't need to get to. And now here's your punishment for getting to Bologna in the state that you're in. Here's Karma coming around to bite you in the, in the cooler. For that one of Korea and Jekyll is leaving as well. I'm going to get to that at the end, Cartel. Thanks for stopping through, my G. Always appreciate it. Um, get nightmares from that game, Mighty Mount. It's about to get worse. You know why I put this slide in there? Because I love the pain and I thrive off misery. It's like oxygen and water and food all combined into one. Embrace your pain, love your pain, acknowledge your pain, and then rid yourself of that pain. Rid yourself of Radu. Get him out of here. Brother is gone. Cremonese on loan. On loan. I hope he has an absolute bomb of a season. Bomb meaning he bombs. He lets in howlers. I don't want to see the guy get another professional contract after this again. And I don't care. People have been saying since he made that mistake that it's slack. It's stupid. You shouldn't wish unwell. I don't wish the guy to get injured or anything like that. I just wish the bloke the suckiest of careers from now until the end of the season. I don't care, bruv. I don't care. I don't think Inzaghi wants to lose Dumfries. I think you're right. We'll get to that. Achoo! As you can tell, it's an absolute shambles going on here health-wise. Um, morning from Jakarta. Wow, long way from home, bro. It's good to see you, Kamal, my man. Good to see 20 people on into worldwide this morning. That makes me happy. Free therapy? Absolutely, man. I ain't charging anything up in here. Uh, remember when we were asking for him to start over Honda? Remember, I was advocating for it, man. Famous last words. I am sorry. I'm sorry, King. I saw some news today. Intel wants to keep Jekyll. Uh, I hope not. Yeah, look, I, I hope that he's out. 
But once again, having Jekyll come off the bench for Lukaku last season, uh, next season, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. You know what would be hilarious, though? If he goes to Juve and ha they have to take his wage on after all the crap that they gave us. Of all ways to let in a goal that was just on another level. Yeah, bro, facts. I I've coached under nines, under tens. I've coached high school. I've coached primary school kids. I've coached autistic kids, if I'm allowed to say that. And I swear to God, I have never had one of my students uh, make an error like that before. So Radu is in a league of his own. 26 people with me on Inter Worldwide. You guys must be bored or it must be late at night somewhere in the world. So like the video, subscribe. Let me know where you're from. Share it around on the socials to keep us growing to 1K. We're over the 700 mark now in well less than a year. It's been uh, just under six months, just under six months since we started the Inter Worldwide campaign again on YouTube. Let's keep it going. Yo, Anto, what's going on? Il numero quattro. Ali here again. How you doing, Ali? Salam alaikum to you, bro. Also a big shout out to Hashraf. Good to see you on here, man. Uh, Christian Vargas is in the house again. If Skriniar is the price in order to get Lukaku, Dybala, and Bremer, then so be it. Yo, facts. If if it has to be one player to get those three, so be it. If it was just one player, like for like, Skriniar for Bastoni, sorry, if Skriniar for Lukaku, or Skriniar for Dybala, or even Skriniar for Bremer, we wouldn't be holding it in the highest regard. Um, anyway, let's move on. I, I love the comments coming in. Um, do I think screening a sacrifice for Bremer is worth it? Maybe we'll get back to that at the end, but I really just want to keep this focused on the players that we know for sure are moving out. So, ciao, Radu. Don't let the door hit you in the cooler on the way out and never come back again. Oh, oh, my eyes. Yara, she burns. It's still, it still hurts, doesn't it? Still hurts a little bit to see this professional walk out the door, but it's okay. What's going on? Dalibor Blazevic, Blazevic. Uh, good morning from Bosnia. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you in Bosnia. I hope you're living really, really well with you and your family, man. Rami, now all the talks about Dybala, do you think you'll go elsewhere? No, I really don't. But to be to be fair, man, I don't consider it the end of the world if Dybala doesn't come to Inter. I really don't. He's he's not a player. I'm going to keep switching looking to I want to make it a, a habit, a, more of a habit of looking into the camera when I speak. I don't think that Dybala... I think... Look how relaxed he is vacationing in Miami with his, ball, with his boy PP. Um... I think that he is moving to Inter. I think Dybala and Pogba are two very arrogant, cocky athletes that are probably training in Miami together, trashing clubs' names and everything like that. Um, they're just two very, very, very entitled athletes. I do think Dybala's coming for the simple fact that we seem to have been very calm about this. Marotta is an egotistical dude. He protects his ego at all costs. He's been flexing about Mar um, Dybala for two and a half years, man. I really think that it's 99% done because that's why it's, it's backed off. You always see these, these sort of like mini drop-offs just before a huge announcement comes out that the, that, that, that the deal's done. Um, what's going on, Matia? My brother, my brother in misery. Who will link up together soon, man. Uh, me neither, and I agree. Sad about that. He was the best player this season and kind of knew Prem Paris is one of the Premier League. He definitely did want the Premier League. He really, really did want the Premier League. Bolta is here. Hi, Anthony. Love to you as well. We're getting a lot of love in this video today, and it's making me feel a lot better. It's making my physical health feel a lot better. So thank you very much to you guys. Uh, Ali says, what financial numbers are we talking? Oh, I'll get to that in a sec, man. I want Dybala uh, just because he played for the Juve Merida for a long time, 100%. Who will push? Um, who will Dybala push out of the starting lineup? I didn't think about it before a couple of days ago, but after his comments, it could be Hakan, man. You never know what Inzaghi's got up his sleeve. But let's just talk about Ivan for a second. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, Marty Mouse said it right here. That he always wanted his Premier League move. He, he wanted Man United a couple of years ago, a few years ago. And um, I think there were some talks with Arsenal in between there, maybe even a Chelsea flick. But now he is a Spurs player. Uh, he deserves his happiness. And um, yeah, I, I once again, it's just another reason for me to smile when Tottenham play next season. And I know Tottenham are not the most likable club in the world. I watch a lot of Premier League. I don't support Tottenham. I don't, I don't say with my chest who I actually support in the Premier League because it could get me in hot water. But I watched Tottenham closely last season when Conte arrived and I was just loving it, man. I was loving it. I'm going to love it even more watching Ivan in the team. I hope that he provides so much quality for Antonio Conte in that side. Thank you so much for the best wishes, Mattia, man. I will get better soon. It's not, nothing more than a common cold. I'm sure I'll be over it in a couple, in a couple of days, bro. Um, yeah, next, uh, next but not least, that's for sure. Alexander Kolarov is retiring at the, at the crisp age of, I think he's 36, is he? 36 years old. Um, great athlete. Really, really great athlete. Respect to him for his time in football. Uh, fantastic stint at Manchester City. Great stuff at Lazio and Roma as well. Um, yeah, just a good player. Did he play for Lazio as well? Lazio and Roma? 
Maybe I'm wrong with that. Can someone correct me there? Because it doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth, but something, unless I'm really for some reason confusing the Man City jersey with the Lazio jersey and thinking that he played for two Bianco, Bianco Lesti uh, sides. So can someone just correct me on that? Because for some reason in my head, I've got in my head that Kolarov was a Lazio player um, and then he was a Man City player and then he was a Roma player. 37, older than Dzeko. Man, am I wearing Icardi's 2018 jersey? <laughs> it is the 2018, bro, but... Hell no, no chance. Come on, less of that, less of that, Rami, bro. Less of that. He played for Lazio City and then Roma, so I got it right. Kolodov, after a pretty good career, <coughs> um, is heading off. Sorry, I flipped the slide one, one too many. We'll get to Froggy in a second. So, well done, well done to Kolodov, man. After a really good career, um, couple of league titles at Man City, or maybe one league title at Man City. Uh, and just overall a professional. You, you don't get to 36 years of age and still play unless you've got something special. Um, and up until he came to us, he was still something. He was still something. So apparently his presence in the dressing room was huge for us. It's a very expensive motivational speaker, a very expensive motivational speaker. But you know what? Happy that he came to our club. Happy that he won a Scudetto in our jersey. And we'll see what happens from there. Froggy, 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 froggy. Wow. If there is anyone deserving of accolades, of send-offs, of respect, it's this guy. Andrea Ronocchia came into the Inter side in the 2011-12 season, won the Coppa Italia, tasted success and probably thought, wow, this is the start of a beautiful journey. <clears throat> Wrong. Could not have been further of the truth. All this guy has known has pain. Uh, all this guy has known is pain and misery. But this guy embodies what it means to be an interista. He would sit the bench. He would rotate in Coppa Italia. He would rotate against bloody. Was it against Ruben? No, no, no. Who was it? Oh man, I'm gonna have to look it up before I say it. It was Europa League 2018, 19. No, no, no. 17, 18. I think. 2017, 18, Inter, round of 32. He had to come in and lead the line because um, it, the whole Icardi saga was absolutely busting, was busting through the headlines. Club was a mess, absolute mess thing. And this guy just came out of nowhere and almost rescued the whole lot of it just with his, just with, just with his presence, man. And he scored a goal as well. I forget who it was in the round of 32. I think we might have gone out to Eintracht Frankfurt that season in the round of 16 or the quarterfinals. I don't know. But there were a couple of legs um, where he played well, scored a goal. It was it was a game where I think Perisic scored this amazing free-flowing run. And then he chipped the keeper with his right foot. And Perisic just jogged away going like, yeah, man, that was quality. That was really quality. It was also the same game where Politano scored a goal, went to the crowd and did this. So I can't remember the opponent, but no, it wasn't Spurs. I'm not talking about the Champions League. It, this was the Europa League just after. Christian Rivas is in the house and he'll probably answer the question for us. Christian, round of 32, remember when the whole Icardi crap was going down and he didn't want to go play Europa League. Ranocchia stepped in and started, and, and we whooped some team like 6-2 on aggregate in the round of 32. It was a small high because Eintracht Frankfurt and Jovic buried us in the round of 16 in the Europa League that season. So I can't remember who it was, but I'll also remember his goal line clearance against Bayern Munich. I'll remember his goal against Empoli. I'll remember him stepping in against Minos. I'll remember him stepping in against small clubs and just, you know, froggy jump. Yes, sir. How high? Yes, mister. How high? So, yeah, he never complained, always did his job. I'm glad we've had this moment of appreciation for it was Rapid Vienna. Thank you, Matteo. <coughs> Thank you, <coughs> Matteo. It was Rapid Vienna. Thank you so much. My phone is broken, sir. I'm on my laptop. Good to see you, man. I love Rano, Mia Capitano, Christian Rivas shouting that from the stands at one of the games a few years back as well. Um, so, yeah, fantastic for Froggy. We love Frog. He's a fantastic athlete, fantastic servant to the club. And his deal is in Monza. Monza, you know, the new uh, the club that's owned by Bellasconi and Galliano. They're coming back up next season. So, you you know, you'll see him in Serie A. Um, I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited to see him still play um, because, 
you know, he, he deserves it. He deserves to stay happy. He deserves to stay happy. He's an athlete that deserves to stay happy. Monza will play in Serie A next season after securing promotion. And Andrea Ranocchia is going to get hella minutes. You know what? What if he turns out a massive season and becomes a pillar for them at the back? And then we get him on loan with an option to... Nah, I'm just kidding, man. That was actually a joke. But congratulations to Ranocchia. There was nothing that made me happier than seeing the photo, especially the one on the left. My left, probably your right. Just the one here... The one with him kissing the trophy. It's, yeah, Jay-Z recommended him. He had so many chances to be on Nesta. Look, man, I've always been hypercritical of him, but the longer time goes by, the longer I'm more inclined to listen to a, a couple of the fans, one of them being Christian and our friend Mario that says, Ranocchio was always paired with trash. Absolute trash. He can't, he was paired with a Juan Jesus or a Campanaro he was, he was just paired with so many average center backs throughout his career that he never got a chance to get going. However, he still could have been better. His, his whole mentality and psychological flaws got the better of him through towards the back end of his career. Sometimes he just can't shake bad luck. There's 30 people on Inter Worldwide right now. So make sure you like the video right now. I'm waiting five seconds for everybody to like the video. Maximum of likes, please. Uh, the Coppa Italia goal was great. Uh, it's a fact. He had terrible partners. He did have terrible partners. I think like the first chance he would have had to have a good partner would have been Miranda. But then we brought in Murillo. And if anybody remembers Murillo, that guy was a was a bit of a bona fide hustler, man. Murillo, Murillo a little bit of a liability in terms of his aggression and his misplaced tackles. Wasn't great with the ball at his feet, but he was a gun. And I liked him. And for the couple of years that he was starting alongside Miranda, I did not mind him whatever. Shout out to Miranda as well. It's easy to forget some of the players that kept us above water while we were really in the banter era, but still just latching onto the prospect of Champions League, waiting to qualify for the Champions League. Big up Miranda. Show some love in the comments for him. He's, a, he's actually a player that I forget about often and we shouldn't. He was actually good with Wolves. He did partner Sam well for one season. Yeah, but you got to remember... When we when we won the treble, bro, as soon as Mourinho got in that car and didn't take the bus back to Milano, the last bit of motivation left Zanetti, Milito, Samuel, Cambiasso, all of the above that were latching on. Like they were in the last peak phase of their career, man. It's a series of unfortunate events. Loyalty and love, fantastic. He saved us this year in the Coppa Italia and we won the title after. He saved us in the Coppa Italia and we won the title after. How have, how have we not said that or acknowledged that before, Mattia? You misery merchant. Let's get Dybala. He's coming in, bro. Don't stress about that. Don't stress about that whatsoever. All right. Stefan de Vrij, debut season in this jersey after literally gifting us Champions League qualification with an intentional tackle and penalty against Mauro Icardi. I didn't think it was intentional at the time, but looking back on it now, this was on purpose. This was on purpose. Guys, stop it with this whole Dybala to Milan thing. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm, ha I'm happy to be put on the gronk. I'm happy to be wrong. But do you really think that we would have been in talks with this guy for the better half of four months or the majority of four months, only for Milan, who haven't made a single signing and haven't renewed their transfer directors yet to come in and offer him five million a season. Come on, Dino, my brother. I know who you are. Use your common sense. You're a smart guy. I know who you are. Neymar on loan, hopefully to Juve, not to us. I would not welcome that guy at all. Not even for free. That guy is a proper liability, bro. He is a virus. He is a virus of a human being. He thinks he is above football, above the game. Neymar has to be one of the last players in the world that I would sign. No, thank you. Not playing to the level he should have this season. Yep, seems like De Vrij's head was somewhere else. Fantastic comment. New comment here. Hey, guys, go Inter from Milan. Great to see. I think it's um, Isaiah. Is Isaiah. Isaiah, I'll go with Isaiah Silvestri. Make sure you like the video, subscribe if you are new, share it to your friends and family and just say, oh, yeah, subscribe to this guy. Just do it. Don't ask questions. De Vrij's season, uh, De Vrij's performances this season for me are a four out of 10. Single-handedly cost us the first derby with his own goal and poor performances at the back. Very much at, at fault for the Arnautovic goal against Bologna. Not because he was marking Arnautovic, but because with about five seconds to go before Arnautovic gets to the back post, he's already pointing at Di Marco to go and mark Arnautovic. Di Marco is about the size of, about the height of my 43 kilogram Rhodesian Ridgeback. 
fair play to DiMarco. He's a good player, but I don't know why Stefan De Vrij didn't switch up and man mark him at the back post. He's been the weakest link in our defense all year. Thanks, Thank you to the anonymous user who has said that. Replaced with Bremer. Yes, but that segues into Matia. Who will buy him? One year left on his contract. I think it could be United or Chelsea. I don't think it's Spurs because I think even Conte is taking a look at him and going, mm, 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 mm. no, no, thank you. Uh, that Giroud turn. Oh, my God. I've still got PTSD from that game, man. I've still got it. I've still got it. And it's not going to go away until we add the second star. So Stefan De Vrij, I think he's moving out. Well done to him for having a stellar season under Conte, getting defender of the year. But his fall from grace at right center back in a back three this season was not good. Um, I'm more than happy to see him go. However, however, if he stays and Skriniar goes, I will support him and I will back him because he is still a professional and he's still a good player, in my opinion. By the way, it's June 25th and still no outgoing sales. Uh, Radul to Cremonese on loan is official. So is Ranocchia to Monza, man. Those are the only two official transfers. Um, but there are a few that are really teetering on the edge of official. And we're going to get to those in a second. Will Bremer be our new Lucio? Uh, maybe, bro. Hopefully, hopefully. United, Chelsea or Newcastle? Yeah, facts. I think those are three very viable options. De Vrij did get the penalty against Juve in the Copa. He did, didn't he? What was he doing in the box there? What was he doing? Um, and his own country compatriot, wasn't it? Delict. Delict. Not good. He didn't have a good season either. I hope I hope somehow, somewhere, Juve are forced to sell him because they ain't got no defense this season anyway. Maybe Newcastle could be good for him. I think so, bro. I'd love to see him go to Newcastle. I would love to see him go to the biggest um, Bianco Neri side in the world. Perisic to Spurs as well. Uh, let's move on now, guys. This is an important one to talk about because I don't think there's anybody in the chat that actually wants to see this guy go. I don't want to see this guy go. Um, he copped a lot of slack this season, but how hard is it as a fullback that's not from Italy to integrate yourself? Sorry, I'm going to keep looking at the camera. To integrate yourself into Serie A, it's bloody tough. Not many people can do it. Even Hakimi took about four months to get it right. Denzel Dumfries' tactical awareness and positioning was actually superior to most wingbacks, fullbacks that I have seen come into Serie A from another league and adjust. Of course, oh man. Of course, I would rather see him go than Skriniar. Of course, of course, of course. Um, but we're not the ones selling. Both Skriniar and Dumfries will coop a massive amount of capital gains, a massive amount of cash, a massive amount of profit, and plus Valenza. We sold Skriniar all together for about, uh, sorry, we uh, bought Skriniar all together for about 25 million M's. And the minimum we'll get for him, in my opinion, is 70. That's a fairly big capital gain. It's a fairly big plus for Lenza. It's a fairly big profit. Denzel Dumfries was signed for 12 and a half million before bonuses around about 15 after winning the Coppa Italia and after making X amount of appearances. He had a good season. Uh, we do need both, bro. We need capital gains or transfer fee surplus. So either way, these are these are two options that can get both of them, you know, both of them. So Denzel Dumfries signed for a cheap fee could go for a lot, a lot. Exactly, Rami. Cancelo, Hakimi, and Dumfries. Every time we find the right flary right, right wing back or right back, we need to let them go. It's painful. It hurts. So maybe if we need to sell Skriniar and we can keep Dumfries, maybe the season isn't looking like a catastrophe. I don't know. I still think there's a lot of stuff to go in this Mercato. There's 33 people here on Inter Worldwide, which is great. Like the video right this second. Make sure you subscribe if you are new and share it around to all of your family, friends, and enemies and say, show the love and drop a subscribe. True, but Skriniar has a better replacement in Milenkovic compared to Dumfries with Cambiaso. Bella Nova. I'm pretty sure you mean. Let me just double check that to make sure I'm not wrong because I don't like correcting people if I'm wrong. But um, if I'm not mistaken, Bella Nova is the right back and Cambiaso is on the left. Yeah, left. So Cambiaso is coming in for the left. Uh, Bella Nova on the right. I don't know if we'll get Cambiaso because um, I think Juve are about to submit a 3 million plus a, plus a player offer. Their directors have got no idea what they're doing at the moment. I actually maintain the fact that they're losing quality in their back room. Um, they can bring Pogba as well for all I care. But the Cambiaso, the Cambiaso deal, if they need to take them, that's fine as long as we lock in Bellanova. Um, what about the Hakimi loan rumors? I think they were exactly just that, bro, just rumors. Um, imagine we could send Dumfries to PSG for Hakimi or 
Imagine we send Skriniar to PSG and get Hakimi back. Oh, I wouldn't be against that. I'm going to sleep in Milan, 1.55 a.m. Good night and good morning to you, Isaiah. Thanks for coming by. Happy Big Rome is back, wanting a new deal. It's a pleasure to see the supporter. Yeah, 100%, 100%, brother. All the best to you. Thanks for coming through again. So, yeah, Big Denzel, uh, after signing here, he had a good season, man. He had a really good season, and I'll be really, really sad to see him go. I don't know about you guys, but it, it'll be it'll be a... It'll be sad, man, because I don't like losing players after one year when they're, they're, they're on the trend. They're on the trend, man. Don't you learn your lessons? Like part of me in my head is saying it might be a better idea to sell Skriniar than it is to sell Dumfries, but I know it's not. Denzel Morris Dumfries, such a good way. Turned out 33 times for us last year. Was it 33 or 35? I was only looking at this stat yesterday. It's either 33 or 35. 33, let's just go with 33. 33 times this season. Are you mad? Five goals. Four assists. That's a great debut season at fullback in Serie A coming from the Riva Dizier. No matter how you look at it. Uh, Matt Pickham, my brother, my misery Matt coming in. With the season starting earlier, we may have movements while games are being played. 100% bro. I actually think we're doing well in June for our market, man. I really do think that. Dumfries will work well with Lukaku. Very, very well with Lukaku. Very, very well. I'm visiting Milan on the San Siro in July. We'll chat about that, man. We'll get you to get some good footage there for the channel. It's harder to get a good wing back than a good centre back. We have to keep Dufries. Christian seeing Christian seeing through the lines here, man. What do you think about the Inter Ultras views on Lukaku coming back? I agree with it. I think it's a fantastic statement from the Kurva. Um, we welcomed you like a king. We treated you like a king. You proclaimed yourself as the king, and then you dipped out on your kingdom and all your followers behind it. Usually in the medieval times, if a king did that, he'd be hunted down and absolutely slayed and stoned on the spot. But Big Rom the Strong is back and he will be in line with the rest of the players. You can earn the love and the respect back on the pitch by scoring goals and securing trophies. Roberto Gagliardini for zero. <laughs> Roberto Gagliardini. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. Mr. Yiro Zepelli. Welcome to the channel. Like it, subscribe if you're new. If Hakimi can make the way to screen your deal, then I wouldn't even think about not selling Dumfries. 100%, man, 100%. So big up to the comments. Big up to Denzel Dumfries. A good season. Two trophies. Like he, he likes it. He likes it here. He loves it here. There is no way that he would want to move, but also a player like him from Holland, there's no way he'd also say no to a move to a big Premier League club because he'll want that. These are good moves for players like this. I said this in a previous video. Moving to Man United is a good move for Dumfries. It's a good move for De Vrij. These are great players, but these aren't currently world-class crop. But these are players that could go into a Ten Hag system, uh, play for a Dutch manager, find themselves in a good environment and be the popular focal point for a club that really can't sink any lower at the moment. So we'll see what happens there. All right. I had to dedicate a little segment to this guy, La Ripresa Vecino. Look at him in all five of his appearances in that zigzag jersey. What a career at Inter for all of the right slash inconsistent reasons no real wrong reasons very little quality with the ball at his feet not a good dribbler can pass the ball okay but what this guy is really good at is carrying defenders into really uncompromising positions on the pitch getting behind them into the nooks and crannies into the attacking final third to really create space for the rest of the attackers and last but definitely not least can find the back of the net if you as a defender marking him, are sleeping even for a millisecond, okay? This guy will always be remembered for this, 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 this. Let's talk about this. Just for one second, let's talk about this. Where were you? Put it below. Where were you when this happened? Because I'll tell you where I was when this happened. I was getting out of bed, still living with my parents, ready to go to school, not school to, to learn, school to teach. And waking up, I'm like, that That whole season was such a drag, man. We got to match day 37 or 36, was it? We got to match day 37. And for some reason, someone thought it was a good idea to treat the match at home against a swallow, like bring your kid to work day. We got done, I think 2-1. Rafinha scored a goal to claw it back. And as of that moment, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, we are out of the Champions League. We are actually out of the Champions League. And then... An even bigger miracle happened. Lazio drew two all on match day 37. I think it might have been against Cagliari or Crotone. 
Can someone put it in the chat if they know? It was Kaliri or Crotone. And for some reason, I feel like Walter Zenga or Sinisa Mihailovic was the manager. I can look it up. But if someone knows it off the top of their head, let me know, please. We'll go Lazio 2-2 Crotone, match day 37. Let's see if it comes up. It was. It was match day 37 against Crotone um, in the, uh, the 20... Yeah, I forget who the manager was. But there was a there was an attachment there to Inter, and it was the biggest favor that we had received all season. Um, it's coming back to me a little bit now. Actually, I'm pretty sure Lazio dominated the game, but it was just they were they were losing. They were losing two one, and it was only a goal from Milinkovic Savic that ended up saving them. Something's telling me it was Zenga was their manager. Here we go. Say if he's saying Zenga, yep, yeah, good. We were on point, on point there with that one. Zenga saving our cooler, and then then this. Then this, Malinkovic Savage on one side, Romelu Lukaku's brother on the other side. Wake, wake yourself up. Is that a dream or is it not a dream? A nightmare for Lazio. 3-2 on the day after we go 1-0 down and 2-1 down. Matias, look at the yeah, air, bro. Everyone just put your tears in, put your laughs in. This is, this was, oh, this was the crowning moment. This was the second wave of me as an Interista. Support starting to follow Inter in like 1998, 99, but only being five, six years old. Emotionally, being in Sydney, Australia, I'm too far away from any of the action to be completely and stupidly in love to the point where it ruins your life in your infancy or in your junior years. But you get a little bit older, you start to follow football more, more, you know, more fluently, more passionately. Then you start to win titles, then you win the Champions League, and then the crash and burn starts when you turn. 17, 18, and it sucks because between the years of 18 and what, 24, 25, your ego is at like its peak and there was zero, there was nothing we could do about it. And this was the crowning moment for Spalletti and for all of us that knew that success was back on the horizon. Fortnite was huge, bro. I could not get my students to stop talk, talking about it. I've blocked those moments. Why are you bringing them back? How can you not want to relive this moment, Emiliano? This is this mo if this moment doesn't happen here, how can you even guarantee that we end up going on to secure Conte and win the Scudetto? Dominoes fall, bro. Dominoes fall. Everything happens for a reason. I don't believe in fate and, and all that destiny and crap, but I truly believe that life is just a follow through from your previous moment. It's a domino effect and everything is just a coincidence. Like, honestly, to the point where it ruins your life. Yeah, it, it did it back in the day, but we're here now. That's enough about Vecino, man. Uh, well, didn't even talk about where he's going. This is why I wanted to do this video, bro. Big up to some of these players. They deserve some love. And it wouldn't be fair if I didn't give them just a little bit, un poco, just a little bit of love. So I think, bro, ironically, look where we are. Holy shit. Sorry. He's going to Lazio, I reckon. I reckon he's going to Lazio. I truly do. After all this, after all this whole conversation, he's probably going to sign for Sari and Lazio. We'll see what happens. I know there's a couple of rumors of him going back to Uruguay, maybe Argentina or even Turkey. I reckon he'll do well in Turkey. Bit of physicality. Signed for a Besiktas or a Galatasaray. We'll see. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Remember that period of time for six weeks when he was the best midfielder in Europe? <laughs> Remember when he had a 9 out of 10 masterclass against Barcelona and Barcelona and Real Madrid started started slipping into our DMs? That was something. I think it was match day 7 or 8 against Juve. We lost the game 2-1 uh, or was it 2-0? I think we might have actually lost it 2-0. Conte, Conte's first game against Juve, against Sari. Conte's first one. Either 2-1 or 2... He was so good, we lost... Yeah. Did we lose 2-1 against Juve or Barcelona on that day? I know that we lost 2-1 against Barcelona, um, but we also lost against Juve, and that was the day that he got clipped. He got clipped, and he never, ever, ever came back. Never. He never had a good game after that. Every game that he played in prior to that injury, he bossed it. And he was never, ever the same. I would see him on Instagram or TikTok or whatever whatever app he was using, doing little dances with his stunning missus. Yeah, that's good that you've got a model missus. Maybe she's got you by the cojones a little bit going, Stefano, you know, stay at home, stay at casa, stay with me, get the money, cook the pasta. 
slip in the bed. Far out, man, because he never returned to the football pitch, mentally or physically, man. Big up to him scoring a goal against Empoli that secured his uh, loan to Samp. I remember everyone was saying, imagine he plays himself into national team form in Samp. Man got injured at Samp. Just couldn't stay healthy. Michael Somers, Forza Inter from Ireland. Forza to you, bro. Thanks for coming in. Like the video, subscribe if you are new. Injuries ruined him. That goal he scored in the Copa before going out on loan. Apparently, Monza won him on a dry loan. Oof. We've got to get something for him, bro. Sell him for five. Sell him for four M's. My boy Christian Rivas, very optimistic, thinks that he was worth 15, 20. No way that that's happened. Sell on loan or loan with an obligation to buy. Just get his wage off the books at the very, very least. Unlucky, Husso, as we say in Sydney. Unlucky. Unlucky, cars. Better luck next time. Better luck next time. There will not be a next time in this jersey. It's a sad state of affairs, man, because that really could have been a position that we were solid in for a long time long time but instead it's just become a little bit of a pain all right speaking of pains this guy was only a little bit of a pain put your hand up in the chat if you regret this signing i hope i see nobody get into that chat because i was more than happy to have a player like arturo vidal come in uh, i've always been a fan of his as a player and to have him play for us and to have him win three trophies in two seasons, he's a winner. That's what he does. This guy doesn't go anywhere and not win. And he'll probably secure a cup or two with Flamengo as well. Um, he's already been photographed in the jersey. It's not official, but it's going to happen. We're just going to have to wait and sort out our books a little bit more. And, you know, just to see, see what happens. No, I don't regret him coming. Absolutely. Uh, I don't regret it, but we need to offload him now. Very, very well said. His time has come and he knows that as well. He is a part of the Conte era. He is a Conte product. He probably didn't expect Conte to leave. I'm happy he stayed for one more season. However, it's time for him to go. Grazie Arturo. You'll always re be remembered for the right reasons here. What a day. It takes a very, very, these two comments. That Juve win means everything. Scored against Juve and played well. It takes a proper baller a proper bloke who does not give a you know what about anyone to kiss the badge of the rivals of the team that you're playing for that you used to play for and then score the goal and arc up with your chest on the byline that was something else he was great against liverpool he was good in the champions league because he's got that sort of pedigree however his his worst moment for us i would say came in the champions league with his red card against um was it a red card? Did he get a red card against Real Madrid the first time we were paired against them? There was a there was a match in the Champions League where he made one of the stupidest challenges and got sent, or he made a really bad challenge and it was a pen. It might have actually been in Serie A. I can't remember. There's been a lot of memories, but Forza Arturo, thank you very much for the memories. All the best of luck when you go to Brazil. I'm sure you are going to do very little training and very plenty drinking and partying. All the best to you. Stay safe. Why not throw that image in? Look at that. Look at Giorgio Chiellini in that. Look at him looking like, oh, my God. You have got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Who's he beating in the air there? It's Danilo, isn't it? Absolutely had him in the air. Red card against Madrid. Thank you very much. First time we were paired against Madrid. Um, he did get a red card against them. And I think I also, also think he conceded a really easy penalty in Serie A as well, just by chopping someone at the end of the box. Um that might, was it against Real? There was a time against in Serie A where he gave away a really stupid penalty and Conte actually shouted out on the sideline, Arturo Stazita, just play football. Arturo, shut up, just play the game. And he almost, yeah, I remember. I really do remember. I just can't remember the opponent for the life of me. Uh, the next one, is that Arturo again? No, it's, it's, uh, it's the dude. La Bomba, what a bomb that he scored against Roma this season. He has scored some great goals for us. If I like the Arturo Vidal stint at Inter, I love, I love the Alexis Sanchez time at Inter. I still remember calling my boy Bruno sitting in the car on the way home from work when images started coming out of him in the aqua, the, the, the really the beautiful... 1920 away kit, which I've said before and I'll say it again. If anybody listening knows where I can get the 1920 away kit, the aqua blue one, send it to me, please. I look on eBay. I look on classic football shirts. I look on inter forums. I go on inter chats. I cannot find this shirt anywhere. My existing one with Lautaro on the back has had so much mileage. The number is ripping off 
I need to get that kit again. Alexis Sanchez at Inter with a Scudetto under his belt with the last second goal in the Supercoppa. Sanchez scored a lot of goals that didn't mean anything. Sanchez loved to score a goal to make it 3-1 or to make it 2-0. He loved to score a goal that wasn't a, a match-defining goal. But Alexis Sanchez, my guy, what a time at Inter. Drop your thoughts in the comments below about what you what how much you've enjoyed having him here. Just to be able to look back and say Alexis Sanchez played for Inter, one of my favorite players um, to watch play in, in the modern era. Like at Arsenal, he was unbelievable. Um, at Man United, obviously not so much. But... I just really, really, was really, really happy to have him at our club. He was a piece of quality that many, many clubs would have liked to have. And he's collected three trophies in his time here. The 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 wage that we've paid him has been steep. But the way that Marotta finessed Man United for this deal was awesome. It was a proper 10 out of 10 masterstroke. What's going on, brother Rob? Yo, I'll stop for a second to say hi to you. My bro, you have a really good day with you and your family, man. Happy Friday to you. Have a safe weekend. Uh, take care of yourself, my brother. We'll speak soon. Um, but yeah, having Alexis Sanchez here at Inter for the two and a half years that he was here, fantastic. Loved it. So many fond memories of his quality. And yeah, Mr. Lion in the cage himself. It was really, really good. Euro chances in the house. Good to see you. I think if we have to sell screening, we should kick the right depth. Depth, I think he means. And get Bremo and Malinkovic. I think most will agree. The unused Ferrari. Yeah, although he was still used. Unfortunately, we got both Vidal and Sanchez past the prime, but I still love their time here. They contributed very, very well to our success, um, especially Alex Alexis, man. So there's absolutely no reason here. Oh, man, sorry. Just not feeling well. Um, there's no reason for us to be upset. So would we like Nacho to replace Frog? I think that wage that wage difference is a little bit too much, though, man. With Froggy leaving, we only have about 1.5 mil in wage cap space to replace him with. We don't really want to give pay rises. He's like Oli Solskjaer with Man United back in the day. Um, yeah, thank you to Alexis. He, he just looks so fly in every jersey, getting that number seven with the Alexis on the back. All right, let's move to this guy here, who's pretty much the last one on our list, on our starting 11. That's definitely leaving. I'll spend a few minutes talking about... Um, uh, the players that aren't on this list that still might leave. But with Pinamonte... Nice little stat padding season for this G. Um, happy to see him go. Wouldn't be completely against him being the fourth choice striker though. But after a decent season for Empoli, you're not going to get a better time than to coop double digits. So <laughs> you're not going to get a better time than to coop double digits um, for this guy. Double digits meaning something anywhere over like 13, 14 million. I had never thought he would get 20, 25. I always thought that he was worth about 8 to 10 to 12. Um, more after this season, though. You know, we're, we're not great sellers, man. We're not great sellers. Marotta's not a good seller. He's just a really good buyer. He's not a great seller. Auxilio's never been a great seller. We as a club have not been great sellers. Although you might argue that, whoa, whoa, hold up, Anthony, getting 115 million for Lukaku and getting him back on loan. But in an ideal world, you don't need to sell Lukaku or Hakimi to begin with. So Marotta selling those two for those figures, it's a good thing, but it's not like he had to work outside of his comfort zone to get those deals to go through. Lukaku and Hakimi are like, you know, Scotch fillet prime rib at the front of the butcher's window. You're not selling chuck meat at the back. So Pinamonte is still going to get a decent fee for us. If we can get about 15 M's for him, I'll be very happy. I still think there's a possibility he can contribute to the whole De Vrij Dumfries leaving and us not having to sell Skriniar. But that also remains to be seen. Pina is linked with Salernitana and Empoli. Skamaka linked with PSG. Exactly right. Um, is Dybala to Inter off? That depends on what you believe in, bro. For me, Rob, I don't think it's off because, you know, I was more inclined to say it wasn't happening the past four months. If you've noticed like my, my tweets and whatnot, but it's only in the last month or so, month or six weeks that I've said this is happening because all signs point to it happening. Why is Paolo Dybala out vacationing and everything's so quiet, man? I don't believe for a second 
that other clubs have not approached him. Yeah, he might not be approached by Barcelona or Man City or Chelsea or even United or those clubs at the moment, but I refuse to sit there and believe for a free that players have uh, clubs have not come for him. I already know for a fact that Sevilla have been rejected, Borussia Dortmund have been rejected, Marseille have been rejected. These are not top tier clubs. These are tier two and three clubs, but they're still clubs. Okay, I really do think that we've had this locked up for a while. And that's why this little bit of silence is just the calm before the storm. The last two days usually have, have indicated what's happened in the last two days with Dybala indicates to me that an announcement is around the corner. Just out of sheer lack of credibility with the sources that are coming out, you've got top tier journalists fighting each other and contradicting, not fighting each other, but their statements are contradicting each other. I don't think even the people that know the most in the game know everything that's going on. I think he's coming. Am I wrong? Possibly. Happy to be because I don't consider him a be all and end all signing. Never have, especially now that Lukaku's coming back and he can link up with Lautaro and Correa again. Dybala is not a must sign. He really isn't. And if the figures are true and Marotta is going in for 5 million plus one and a half for bonuses, that's a steal. And I hope it is what it is. But at the end of the day, we will be okay if we don't get Dybala. That's for sure. And uh, this this comment from Matias, good. Don Beppe wouldn't allow himself to miss out on Dybala. That, that's what I mean. Marotta has never really gone against his word. He's never really come out and flexed with this and then just got been left in the, in the corner to simp and sook. You know, this is the guy that pretty much told Mauro Icardi, if I've got anything to do with it, you will be out the doors and never returning. This is the guy that went up to Raja Nangolan and said, I don't care if the coach doesn't like you. I don't like you. And to be honest, I probably don't even like this coach that much at the moment either. The guy has been a pillar of strength at our club. And I see a lot of Juventus fans going, oh, great work from the Juve management at the moment. Not letting Dybala walk all over their club. Bro. Bro, come on, man. You've let your prime asset walk for free to your biggest rivals, to your former director who said no to a certain signing that stunted the growth of said player that's going to move for free. I can't do this crap anymore, man. It hurts my head. Greetings from Milano. Yep, yeah, thanks, bro. Thank you very much. I mean, he's going to be starting on the bench anyway. Um, Dumfries gone. We've already alluded to that, man. Possibly let me know what you think. Um, that's where we're pretty much going to wrap it up. Jekyll, maybe going, maybe. Correa, staying, in my opinion. Who else can we talk about? Bastoni, definitely staying. He was pictured this morning in the Serie A photo shoot with the Puma ball. He's an ambassador for the Serie A this season, so he's not going anywhere. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anybody off the top of my head that might be leaving. Oh, now we're going into this pool of player. Dalbert and your Valentino Lazzaros, these guys that are on loan. Or out. The thing is, bro, we, if we're supposed to improve our red line on our books and still improve our capital gains and plus Valenza, we can't sell these guys for two, three million and just cut the loss because it's, it's, it's a loss. It's a loss. We might as well just keep loaning them out until their contract runs out. It's sad, bro, but Dalberto Carlos and, um, you know, Valentino Lazzario, <laughs> Lazzarino. God, he had no flair about him whatsoever. The only flair about him was in his, in his drip and his whip and his bling when he decided to do his announcement videos. The boy, Uncle Sharma, said it perfectly. He's never seen a, <laughs> a drippier player come to Inter, a cooler player look like it was coming to Inter, but he was just, he was bad. He was bad. Hakan should not be a bench, uh, a bench warmer, Zio. I don't know. I don't know, bro. We'll see what happens, man. Scrinia is leaving. Come on, man. We've just done a whole video trying to trying to stay positive, Mateo, and you come out with that. Jekko was supposed to be Lukaku backup, which would be good. Correa should leave if anyone is leaving. Wow. So, Mateo, would you prefer Correa to leave over Jekko? If I was to pick, I'd still let Jekko go because Correa's still got a little bit more to offer. Dalberto Carlos, bro. Dalberto Carlos with all of his goals against Benevento for us. I think Jekko is going to be a great substitution for Lukaku. The facts, we've asked a 36-year-old to put in the minutes of a 25-year-old this season, and I just wouldn't care how, who is down, but Jekko as a sub could be really good. I think so. Um, yeah, plus Valenza is capital gains in Italian. That's why I always I always say it twice, just in case people don't know what plus Valenza is. Um, looking at the lineup on the screen, I reckon if you put this lineup on the field, it would finish eighth in Serie A. Eighth. Perisic and Dumfries would be good. 
but the rest would just be frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Respect the Lord Drip Anto. You got to respect it, man. He had a lot of flair about him, man. A lot of bling, a lot of bling, a lot of attitude. But, uh, you know, let's chat more hat. Let's chat more output, please. Let's talk more walk. Um, and we could, he couldn't provide that. There's 27 people with me still right now. Like the video. Let me know if you are new. I'm going to head off now because it hasn't been a great day. Physical health for me. I'm going to quickly go to the doctor, get a script for some meds, come back, hit the couch and maybe watch some culture, watch some football, play some PlayStation just to finish off this fatiguing Friday. Thank you so much to Forza Inter. Thank you so much to Gerald. Thank you to King Darian. Thank you, Mighty Mal, Pierre. Thank you very much, Emiliano, as always. Emiliano, brother, always coming through. Matteo, as well. Thank you to Jeff Tynes. Uh, thank you to Isaiah for the first time. Brother Matia, as per usual. Rob, have a good weekend, bro, with you and your family. Uh, Rami, as well. Thank you for participating in the chat today. It was very, um, very enjoyable. Euro chats, uh, Saif. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody at the top? Uh, el numero cuatro, Ali. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate <coughs> Thank you to everybody, Christian Vargas as well, and all the regulars like Matt and Christian Rivas that came into the chat. I really appreciate all of you. I'll come out with some more content soon. And yeah, really, really good just to speak with a few of you again. All right. Forza Inter, Forza Inter worldwide. Ciao.